Hello, it's Jimmy here. I have here a Land Rover Discovery 4 to have a look at. Okay, so inside the vehicle we have DPF full sign. I've just pulled up on it there. Washer fluid low. Engine lights on and we've got a triangle warning symbol there. So it's Discovery 4 3.0 V6 TDI. Okay, so I've just been using this tool in a few videos to see what it's capable of doing and what it's not capable of doing. This is the Tinkscan 689BT from Tinkcar. Uh, I'll put a link in the video where you can buy this tool from. So the link will be in the video description with a 10% discount code for it. Um, right, let's just um, find out about diagnosing this car now. Okay, 2016 Land Rover Discovery 4, L319. Okay, we have a 3.0 high power diesel. Do a health report. So these are all different modules that it's going to go through. Okay, fault codes are up. We have P2463 particle filter pressure sensor circuit range performance NOx exceedance NOx exceedance on these can usually just be triggered off because it's got a black DPF or it's low on AdBlue uh, conditions incorrect for particle filter regeneration so the vehicle is getting a black DPF because there is something wrong something causing it not to be able to regenerate on its own basically and that's going to be because of this code here P0103 dash 17 mass airflow circuit high input uh, right let's go into this module here mass airflow we'll try and look at that we'll get the dpf pressure up as well see how badly blocked the dpf is one good thing about these land rovers in the 3.0 engine is i've never really out of all the ones I've ever seen, I think I've only ever seen one with a damaged DPF, so the chances of being able to clean it are very high. There's never usually a very bad success rate on the DPF cleaning for these cars. Um, 40 millibars of pressure on the DPF. Let's see if we can see something about what's going on with this airflow. The only confusing thing about these now is that they have two airflow meters. Uh, you got a bank one and bank two. So bank one would usually be uh, left side, bank two right side. I think V6 engine. I did get questions before. What does bank one and bank two mean? If you've got a car that's got a normal four-cylinder engine and you've got bank one, bank two, it, the bank two doesn't mean anything. You've only got one bank really. Um, but a bank one, bank two would be the left side of the V6 engine, right side of the V6 engine. Airflow B, airflow A. Uh, let's, just, oh, let's just click everything. Airflow for mass airflow sensor bank one 5.2 grams. Pretty sure that's a bit lower than you'd normally like to see. Airflow for mass airflow sensor bank two 187. Mass airflow sensor A 187. Mass airflow sensor B. 5.2 so it looks like it's this one that's the issue to me is it let's give it a it sounds like we might have an air leak let's have a little visual check around see if we can see any signs of Air leaks, boost leaks. Uh, can we open this without getting splashes? Let's see. Yep. Put that back on. So first place I'm going to check is just around here, manifold. These can crack, they're plastic. I'll check both sides of those, see if we can see any sort of wet 
signs of wet oil or anything like that. Look down the front of the engine, see if we can see anything there. This clip again is another place where you can have leaks around here. If we can't see anything, we'll just uh, do a smoke test. Okay, I'm going to try and figure out which one of these is A and B, really, so... Um, try and keep an eye on these while I disconnect. Right, airflow 1. Airflow 2. Okay, so this is... Airflow sensor 2. You can see that when we unplug that it moves. This one. There we go. So as far as, I'm, as far as I can see on these engines, is this is the main air intake. This is a secondary one, so maybe that's supposed to pull less air. It's a smaller tube, but flattens out quite thin there. Checking the condition of the air filter first, make sure that's not blocked, and then we're not getting any changes in the reading once we have the air filter disconnected. Okay, so now I'm using a Launch UK smoke leak detector. Just got that hooked up at the minute. Just going to keep an eye out, see if we've got any sort of leaks anywhere that's connected into the intake there. We've got one blanked off. Okay, so we've got the air box off, we haven't found no air leaks anywhere. What we're going to do is this one is the 0 0.21 so we're going to disconnect that so we had 0 0.2 reading there for that one disconnect this one swap them over they're both the same see what the difference is see now we're getting 226 on this one where we're getting 0 0.2 on it before and then if we connect this one we're getting 19.8 so you can see that when we switch them over we're getting 226 over this side that we were getting to the 226 on this side with that filter, with that air airflow meter on this side, so it looks like we've got a bad airflow meter, really. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see the screen. Here. I'm trying to get it in a position where it is, the glare is just about right, where you can see mass airflow sensor A, airflow sensor B. I've now determined that that's B. I did. I have done this before, loads of times, but I, you, you come, when you do loads of different cars, you completely forget which one's A, which one's B. Of course best way to for me to remember that in the future would be that a is the primary one b is secondary um so if we look at that one it's still on 226 grams and if we unplug the sensor it comes up with zero now i know i've unplugged that but watch if we clear the fault code now and we go back in We've still got an airflow circuit high on number B, on, on airflow B, even though I've just cleared the fault code. Now, if I'll switch it over here, and we should get an air, a circuit issue with airflow A. Okay, so I've swapped the airflow meters over. Uh, we're going to go back. Press. So we, sh we should have two now, of course, yeah, because obviously we've, I've unplugged both. So we've got both sensors now. If we go back... Sorry, down here. Clear the fault code. We should have num we should have airflow A. Yeah, there we go. P O one O three one seven again. It doesn't say A, but that's that one. So this is the one that's going to have the faulty sensor. You can see obviously as you move it from one side to the other. I suppose it's a good a good thing about having a, a V six. You've got two airflow meters. You can swap and change to see if the fault does swap over. Um, it's, a, it's a really easy way to do it uh, so I hope you understand what I was looking at obviously we're getting the 226 on here when we move it over here we're getting 226 grams even with the engine off uh, it's way higher than than you should be most cars are sort of in around I think in around sort of 10 grams this was pulling 18 I think which is quite a big engine maybe it does pull 18 grams of air 
Uh, okay, so we, we know now we've determined that this is the airflow meter that's chucking off the circuit error. So we're just going to unplug that, get a replacement. Okay, we've got this replacement sensor here from NGK or NTK. Okay, got that plugged in. Now, if we clear this fault code, back, clear, let's go back in. See now it's gone. That's another one we do have, which is the P2463 range performance. I, I don't think that needs a sensor, it's just a block DPF code. Because if, but if you read this pressure sensor B circuit performance, that would point you at thinking that it needs a new sensor. As far as I can see at the moment, it doesn't need a new sensor. It's just because the DPF has been set as a block DPF and it's now locked into the system basically. So we're going to need to do a proper DPF reset on that once we clean the DPF down. Okay, so we've got to the, to the bottom of why the DPF was blocking up, which is that bad sensor there. Do you know what? It's not often that, that these sensors... I think this is the second airflow sensor I've changed in 10 years. It's never, ever usually... There's never usually an issue with an airflow sensor. Um, some people say you can clean these up. I don't think I've ever been successful at doing that. But, like I said, it's a very, very rare case that you actually have a faulty airflow meter 99% of the time if you've got airflow codes it's always like a boost leak or something else that's affecting the airflow so you can see A and B airflow centers now are down at sort of 0 0 0.4 0 0.2 okay so that's the airbox fitted back on I've just got a couple of screws to tighten down now now I know you're always going to get people in the comments section maybe saying, "Oh, you didn't do, you didn't put it, you should, should have put a scope on it. You should have checked the the, the wire and you should have checked the, the power supplies." We never got to that point. If we couldn't fix the issue doing what I was doing, then you'd go down further steps. Okay, back in the vehicle, engine idling. We also have a message there for diesel fluid low, which is the ad blue. You can see both airflow sensors are reading. Uh, we've got one reading 22 and that's what we're getting now so we're going to clear these off now okay next step is to clean the dpf we've got that connected up here to the dpf via the pressure sensor tube and of course it's going across to the compressor over there okay we're just going to squeeze the trigger get this dpf cleaner and fluid pushed in to the DPF, set that at 120 psi. Okay now the fluid's in there, we get back inside, just hold the revs up for a couple of minutes. And we should see the pressure start to come down. We're down to 60, just over 3000 rpm. And 50. We do get some steam coming from the exhaust. If you can see the rear of the, the mirror there, you can see from the exhaust we're getting a bit of smoke out there. So we're down to 40 so far, which is good enough. Okay, now we're going to use the tool to reset the DPF values, which is doing this. Setting it as a replacement, basically. It's the only way to reset it. But now we have the pressure down nice and low. It's safe to do this. If you reset this without cleaning the DPF, you have a risk of damaging it. Okay, that's complete. There's a message for exhaust fluid level low. I'm going to top that up soon. Okay, now we've done the resets, we're just rescanning the vehicle. We should probably now just have the P2B AE NOx exceedance. But once we've topped up the AdBlue, I've shown that on my videos before, you top up the ad blue and that NOx exceedance code will go away. Sometimes you don't even have to clear the code, you just top up top up the ad blue, rescan the car and the fault has magically disappeared. Okay there we go, just like I said, P2B AA NOx exceedance, so we have all the rest of the fault codes gone, we're just going to test drive the car now. Okay, so that's the AdBlue topped up. Now let's rescan the car. And there you go, just like I said, 
fault code has gone now we have no more knock succeedings we haven't done anything just apart from reset the fault code like we've done before we topped up the ad blue okay the vehicle's gone on a test drive what a beautiful car to drive these are i mean the acceleration on them how smooth they pick up unbelievable for a car this year and this heavy okay test drive's all finished okay we have 40 millibars 3000 rpm and if we let it go down you'll see it goes to zero because anything under 10 millibars i can't read basically then of course we just go back and read the fault codes make sure that no fault codes have returned and we can go back if i can get my fingers to press it okay yeah so we're just about finished um i do like these cars i had one of these cars for five years at one point a discovery four i had a, Disco a discovery one then i had a discovery two then I had a Discovery 3, then I had a Discovery 4 for five years. I've had this, I've got a Discovery 5 now, and honestly, I think I think I prefer the, the Discovery 4. I, just, I prefer how they drive. They just feel they just feel more solid, and they feel I don't know. They just feel better to me. Um, I had one of these for five years. I didn't have any issues with it. I've got my Discovery 5 now for about five years as well. I haven't had a single fault with that. Um, they do get a lot of a bad abuse from the name these these ones are not too bad of course there is the issue where some some people do see crankshaft failure i think that's from abuse to be honest maybe not changing the oil often enough or towing you know a lot of people tow, tow heavy stuff with these three and a half ton diggers and stuff if you combine that with abusing them you probably will have crankshaft failure but all of the ones i've had i think i sold mine with 160,000 on it and my discovery 5 at the minute has got about 130 140 on it um, I haven't had any issues with any of them, uh, but the 2 litre Ingenium engines are absolute rubbish, so I would never buy one of those. But in, in regards to these these discoveries, in my opinion, one of the best all around cars that you can you can actually buy. Like um, they're just very practical. You can tow them, all of that. Uh, that's just my input on these cars. A little bit of information while I was just going through what we're doing here. But we're basically just about finished now. The DPF clean. The airflow meter is reading correctly. Um, all good. That's it, we're all finished on this one. See you on our next video.